Hello to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. I'm Andre Ketnikov, and I want to share a question that I just learned today. And I was surprised that this question never crossed my mind before. After all, it's right on the surface. Look, we all know that there are red stars and blue stars. There are yellow stars. But why are there no green stars? After all, green is right in the middle of the visible spectrum. Every hunter wants to know where the pheasant sits between red and blue. And this question is so wonderful that I think it would be great if you also take a moment to think about it first. Stop the video and write in the comments what you think about this. And then take a look at my reasoning. And to understand why there are no green stars in the sky, we need to remind ourselves that color is what we perceive with our eyes. And the basic physical characteristic of a star in this context is its surface temperature. And by the way, all stars emit like perfect black bodies in the sense that physicists use this term. Ah, uh, the surface temperature of a star and the wavelength at which its radiation is maximized are related to Wien's law. If the temperature has increased by a certain factor, then the wavelength has decreased by the same factor. The product of temperature and wavelength is a constant value. So, correspondingly, cold stars, which have a low temperature, have a long wavelength, and emit in the red part of the spectrum, and even further into the infrared. For example, a star with a surface temperature of about 3,000 Kelvin emits somewhere around 1,000 and that's where its maximum is. And I'll roughly illustrate its radiation spectrum here. Well, its tail falls into the red and yellow part. And after that, nothing really gets absorbed. That's why we see this star as red. And just like that, if a star is hot and its temperature is, for example, 10,000 Kelvin, its maximum is somewhere around here. Well, accordingly, it's already very bright, of course, especially in the red. But that tail falls right here. And again, the maximum is right here, in the blue area. In the middle, especially in the red, nothing really gets pulled in anymore. Now, it would seem that a star with its maximum right in the green should be green. But the thing is, the peak of the radiation is quite broad. You see, generally speaking, the colors we see are adjusted. The solar radiation. The temperature of the sun is just under 6,000 Kelvin. So let's draw the spectrum of the sun here in green. The maximum of the radiation is somewhere around here, but this radiation falls into both the blue area and the red area. And in our eyes, all the cones that perceive blue, green, and red are all quite strongly stimulated. I probably use the word identical incorrectly, but they are quite strongly stimulated. And we essentially perceive the mixture of all spectral colors as being perceived as white. So, the stars that we might want to call green actually appear white to us in our perception of reality. And if we look at the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, which connects a star's temperature to its color, here they are plotted horizontally, and luminosity is plotted vertically. The stars themselves are shown here as cold, red ones transitioning to yellow, and hot blue ones transitioning to light blue, with white stars in between, and definitely not green. So, we figured out the stars, and now for our final question. Imagine if the surface of the International Space Station was painted entirely in emerald green. So tell me. When the station flies over us at night, what color would that little star in the sky be? Write your answers to this question in the comments of this video on YouTube. 